Okay, so this video is going to be about the five essential things you need to know or have to basically travel around in the world of Outward, because traveling is as much of an experience as combat is, and actually it's probably more dangerous in many situations. So the first category is going to be consumables, and we're going to talk about a couple things within this category. The most basic one is being food. So as your character's out in the world, you're going to notice that once in a while, I think it's a fork and knife icon pops up in the bottom left, and that means that your character is hungry. And if you don't appease your hunger, um, all sorts of bad things are going to start happening. Your health's going to drain, your stamina's going down, etc. So the easiest way to get food is to buy bread from Master Chef Arago in town. Can I help you? If you look... The bread is only one silver, and if you buy like four or five of them, you should have enough to quench your hunger when you go out into the wild. You can of course cook more complicated recipes and get health bonuses and stuff like that, but really simple way to just have food is just buy bread. It's super cheap and it will quench your hunger when your guy gets hungry. The second thing we're going to need under consumables is travel rations. Um, you would think this would be used for food mainly, but it's not. So when you leave one zone and go into another zone, you need something called travel rations. You almost have to, like, pay to get into another zone, but you don't pay with silver, you pay with travel rations. And typically you need three to four to change into another zone. So you're going to want to have, you know, I would at least three to four, but probably double that if you're going to be traveling to a couple different zones or you want to come back to the zone that you are in. To make travel rations, you need a couple ingredients, though. You're going to need salt for sure. Salt is super easy to get when you're in the starting town. If you just go into your water skin bag and drain out the clean water in it, once you have an empty bag, you can go up to the salt water and just gather. I think you have to gather it twice maybe to get it full. And now my water skin is full of salt water. And we're going to bring that back to the kitchen and take the salt out of the water. And you also need two ration ingredients which could be meat or bread that you just bought or even fish so there's a lot of fish on the beach we'll just gather some fish right here and this should be enough to make some travel rations okay so now we're going to head to the kitchen in the lighthouse and um, cook up some travel rations and look at the recipes for making better quality food to give you guys some extra bonuses Okay, so once we get in the lighthouse, we're just going to go downstairs to the kitchen. And the first thing we're trying to do is get salt so we can make food and make the travel rations. Alright, so when you get in the kitchen, you want to scroll over to manual recipe. And look for the salt water bag. Place it there. And hit triangle if you're on PlayStation to craft. And you're going to notice that you get your water satchel is now filled up with five clean water. And you also now have salt. Okay, once you have salt... Then you can click on Travel Ration, and if you notice, you need two ration ingredients, which could be bread, fish, or meat. And you place the two ingredients right there in a piece of salt, hit Craft, and then you have yourself a Travel Ration. And I believe when you cook one, you get three, so you're going to want to do it at least twice so you have six, and more if you have room in your backpack. And while you're in the kitchen, you can cook more advanced dishes as well, which will give you better healing properties and a better hunger quench basically so if you look I got meat stew right here and I can cook meat stew with a vegetable piece of salt and a piece of meat which you can farm from the birds outside of the town okay so now we've talked about food the basic way of buying bread or cooking a meal and we have created some travel rations so we can travel zone to zone so the third thing under consumables we're gonna need before we head out is going to be water so if you just took the salt out of your water, then your water skin should be clean water right now. And you should be able to drink it. And you're going to want that to be full before you go out. I've been fine with one water skin, but you can have two if you want two for backup. If you don't have water, most of the towns and cities have a water well. And you can simply go up to them and hit the triangle button and fill up your water skin. Alright, the last thing under consumables is going to be you need a way to heal yourself. Um, one way you can do this is through cooking a dish that actually gives healing properties by sleeping that will heal you or by, or by buying an alchemy potion there's a life potion that gives you a really good heal so you can buy a potion from the alchemist in town hey there. it's kind of expensive but it's worth having a couple 
and it's called the Life Potion, and that will heal you up instantly when you're in a battle. Or you can buy an alchemical kit and create your own potions. All right, the third essential item we're going to need before we head out and travel is going to be a campfire. So if you guys go into your crafting menu and scroll over and scroll down over to campfire kit, you're going to see that you need three pieces of wood to craft the campfire kit. And wood is one of the easiest items to come across in this game. You can just go up to any tree and it's unlimited wood and you only need three pieces to craft the campfire kit. So we're going to go ahead and craft the campfire right now, even though we don't technically need one. And then we're going to go into our inventory, scroll over the campfire kit, and we're going to deploy it right here in the middle of the road so everybody has to walk over the fire. Now you'll notice the campfire is set up, but it's not lit. So you're going to need some flint and steel. If I hit triangle right now, it will light the campfire because I do have flint and steel in my inventory. If you don't have flint and steel, um, you can find it. I found a lot of it underneath the lighthouse in the storage here in the first town. Or I believe shopkeeper Duran right here also sells flint and steel for maybe three silver per buy, which is, which is pretty cheap. So once you have flint and steel, it's going to allow you to light the campfire. And now, now that the campfire is lit, if you're in a cold climate, you're going to get warmth from the campfire and it's going to prevent you from dying. It's really essential when you're in a snowy area. Also with the campfire, um, you can cook over it now too. So if you have a cooking pot, which I think I accidentally sold mine. If you have a cooking pot, um, you can buy from the chef in town or you can buy from Duran. Duran sells everything. Hey, get this dude off my fire. What the hell are you doing, man? When you have a cooking pot in your inventory, you simply go up to the campfire and you deploy it over that and then you can cook your travel rations or make meals to heal and stuff. And if you want to get more advanced, you can put an alchemist kit, I think it's called, an alchemist kit over the fire and you can start making potions and stuff, but I haven't even done that yet. Okay, so so far we've talked about consumables, which has been food, travel rations, and something to drink, as well as having a healing method to heal yourself, which could be a potion or food. We've talked about having a campfire readily available to make. And now we're going to talk about sleeping. So sleeping is important, one, because it restores your max health and your max stamina, because throughout the day and the more you fight, um, your max health and your max stamina goes down and you cannot increase it back to that level. And sleeping will restore this. Sleeping also just restores your health in general. And if you get a good night's sleep in an inn or in a good bed, it will give you a bunch of bonus properties. The most basic sleeping item you can have is this improvised bedroll. You can place this thing anywhere you want and if you're in a town um, you can place it right in the street and you can get some sleep and get your health back. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it in the wild because you'll probably get robbed or something at night and it also exposes you to weather conditions so you'll probably end up dying if you do it out in the wild. If you travel to another city and you don't have a house in the city you can simply take it out. You can even go inside their inn and place it right in front of their desk when, if you don't have money to get a room. And then you can go to sleep and get some of your health back and your max health and max stamina. If you want to be smart, go to Shopkeeper Duran, and Is you will notice you that he sells a he sells a simple tent, which is a well-made tent that helps protect against weather compared to a bedroll. Sleeping in this tent gives a small bonus of stamina to you. So if you buy this tent, you can camp out in the wild much easier. It's going to protect you from the weather, and it's also going to give you a stamina boost, and you're just going to be safer all around. All right, the fourth essential thing we need to know is going to be clothing and wearing appropriate clothing. So when you're in the starting area, it's pretty much mild temperatures. You can wear whatever you want. But if you stay here long enough, it's going to start to snow. And you're going to notice that your body temperature starts to drop, and then you start to get sick and start to lose health. So if you're going out in a snowy area, you're going to want to make sure you have some clothes. If we look at the clothes I'm wearing right now, my padded helm, if you notice, it says resistance, impact resistance, and then cold weather defense is plus five. If we look over at my scavenger coat, you can see that the cold weather defense is plus six, and the boots are plus five. So now if I go into a desert area, I'm going to want hot weather defense, so I'm going to have to switch my clothing up. We'll put on this and this, and now let's check out my inventory again of what I'm wearing. I'm still wearing the same helm because I don't have a better helm right now for hot weather. But if you notice, the nobleman attire right here now says hot weather defense plus 14. And my sandals obviously would give a hot weather defense of plus 6. 
So I'm going to want to wear that when I'm in the desert and it will keep my body temperature down. If you're lucky, you'll be in a mild area and you don't have to worry about it really and you can wear what looks cool. But when you go in the desert or you're in the cold weather conditions, it's really important to wear what's appropriate for that area. All right, so the last category we need to talk about is just going to be miscellaneous. Um, some of them are pretty obvious, like you need to have a weapon and you need to have a backpack. If you don't know how to upgrade your backpack or find your backpack, I have another video on this channel that you can watch. You're going to want a lantern hanging off that backpack or a lantern in your inventory for when it gets dark because in this game when it gets dark, it gets dark and you need to be able to see. Another two things under the miscellaneous category would be bandages. It's going to be super helpful because if you get hit by an enemy and you're bleeding, you're going to be taking constant health potions or constant food to reverse damage over time on your health that the bleeding effect does. And a bandage will cure this. And a bandage also gives you some health. So it's kind of important to have. If you don't have it, you can still travel though. And you should also have an antidote which will cure you from poisons. Um, some of them will cure you from diseases if you catch a disease while you're out in the wild. 